Welcome to day 36, where I'm going to teach you some secrets of string manipulation to make your lists, your ifs, and your comparisons even easier. Now, you may have written something like this a number of days ago for our insult generator. In this program, I'm looking desperately to find me, and if I do, to insult them. And you may have encountered this problem as well. So, if I do the lowercase version, I get my insult. If I write my name in proper case, I get the insult. But if I decide that I'm going to do a bit of mocking SpongeBob, ah, obviously it's seen my beautiful haircut and realized how wonderful my hair really is. Yeah, nobody's buying that. The problem we have though, is building that if statement is going to be a real pain in the backside to look at every possible combination of the way somebody could capitalize David. Even if they do something as silly as put a space in front of it, it's not going to recognize it because it's comparing David against Space David. And Space David isn't me with a space helmet on. It is just the text with a space in front of it. And to the computer, those two things are completely different. What we need are ways of simplifying what the user typed in to something that will be more consistent for us to look at in an if statement. Now, what we're doing here can be done at the end of the bracket on this input statement, which is really, really powerful. It means that whatever they type in, we can sort out and tidy up and mess with. But it does mean that we get a few problems later on. I'm actually going to do it within my if. I'm going to simplify my if. All these need to be done at the end of the name of the variable, just like we were doing with our lists. The dot command comes in useful again, and we're gonna add a few extra things. The first thing I wanna deal with is all those different types of capitalizations. Now we've got a few different functions that we can apply to a string to change how it's capitalized. We've got lower, which makes it all lowercase. We've got upper, which makes it all uppercase. And we've also got title, which capitalizes the first letter of every word. I'm going to use dot lower. And importantly, because this is a function, we do need a left bracket and a right bracket at the end, just like we did with the subroutines. And what that's going to do is it's going to take whatever's in the name variable, turn it all to lowercase, and then compare it to what I've typed in. This means that I have to type it in lowercase. Similarly, if I did dot upper, I'd need to do it in uppercase. If I did it in dot title, I'd need to do it in dot title case. If we run the program now, it can ask us our name and I can type it in lowercase and it insults me. I can type it in uppercase and it still insults me. Even mocking SpongeBob isn't gonna help me because every single time it's converting it to lowercase before it compares. This is amazing because what I've done is massively limited the amount of ors I need to write in my if statement. My if statement now becomes very, very powerful. How about this then? What happens if I'm a little bit clever and do that space first? Ha ha, I've confused it. Well, the nice thing about this is we can chain them together. So after dot lower, I can put another dot in and apply another effect. The effect I want to apply is called strip. No, don't panic, these clothes are staying on. The strip effect is going to remove spaces either side of the word. This is really helpful because, ah, I'm still getting insulted now because no matter how many spaces I put either side of what I'm typing in, it's gonna get rid of them to make it a nice, meaningful, sensible piece of text. We can actually plug a load of those in together if we want to, but it does allow us to take in data and use it in a much more useful way. Try this out for yourself with a very simple program like I've got here that looks for a name in a very certain format and see if you can avoid all the pitfalls that somebody might take of typing their name in to fool your program. So here I have a really simple program that creates a list. I have a printing subroutine for it, which is gonna print it out in a slightly nicer way. And all I'm doing in my while true loop is constantly keep asking the user to add something to the list, which I then add and print out the list. 
So this is nowhere near as complicated as the stuff you've already done. But previously, I'd asked you to create a program that didn't allow duplicates. One of the ways you might have done that is with this. Putting the append inside an if statement that checked to see if it was there first means that you don't get duplicates. But of course, we know that there is a way around that because if I were to add a phone to my list and then a phone, notice we don't get the duplicate. But if I just ever so slightly change that, put a space in front of it, put a space at the end, the if statement now isn't being used properly because all these things look different. All these strings look different to the if statement. Well, this is where we can use those functions to make it nicer. One of the things that I'm gonna do is instead of adding it to the if, is I'm gonna add it to the end of the input. Remember, what's gonna to happen to that input is that's gonna get evaluated first. It's gonna end up as a string. So that line is gonna be replaced with the string. Whatever I do dot here, it's gonna to happen to the string. Make sure that whatever you do here is how you want it stored though, because the changes you make here are changing the way that it's gonna be stored in the array in the first place. So I'm going to use the capitalize function. This is going to set the first letter to be a capital letter and the rest to lowercase. I'm also going to follow it up with my friend strip to get rid of any extra spaces people are leaving in. This time now I can add my phone and notice that it got added with a capital letter because I manipulated that. If I go in and add a bunch of spaces and try it again, now notice that I added it and that's not quite what we wanted. So this is where we get onto common problems. The functions that are manipulating the strings are applied in the order that we add them. So what's happened here is that it's changed the first letter to a capital. The first letter was a space. The strip function then removed the spaces. What we need to do is swap those around so that the spaces go first. A common problem then is just the order in which you put these things in. When I do this now, phone is added with a capital and it ignores that one. It ignores that one. It ignores that one. And this way we can make a list with better formatted items in the list and also avoiding duplicates from idiocy in the way somebody might type in what they're gonna put in. Here's some code that I've broken myself. See if you can fix it for me. Particularly look at where the string manipulation techniques are being used and think about the order in which they're being used. Your challenge for today is I would like you to create a list of people's names. Now the way I'd like you to do this is to ask for their first name and their surname separately. I'd like you to make sure that you strip them of any erroneous spaces and store them in a capitalized or title case version. I then like you to create a new string using an F string that combines the tidied up version of their first name and the tidied up version of their surname. I'd like you to add that to a list and not allow any duplicate names to be added to the list at all. Each time we add a new name, we should print out the full list. This name storage system is a way of keeping a unique list of all the people that you know. Once again, publish it to the community and share it with us using the hashtag replit 100 days of code. It's day 37 tomorrow where I'm going to teach you almost a miraculous thing called string slicing, where we're going to chop those strings into parts.